software defined networking which is actually the next module we we might get into later on but today i just want to tell you because that also is relevant to this whole virtualization stuff is that software defined networking what they did was they centralized the controllable in the control plane so what is the control plane basically all the routers and the switches they have to prepare a forwarding table and then once they have the forwarding table they can forward the data they can look at the destination address into the forwarding table and uh, we can call them routing table and and then forward so the process of just looking at the table is called data plane because that is uh, has to be done at gigabits per second and the process of making the table is called the control plane that doesn't have to be very fast although it requires lots of computation forwarding has to be done fast it does not require any computation it's just a table lookup all right so that is done in the hardware the data plane is done in the hardware the 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 control that plane is done on a processor cpu so generally each router or a switch has a processor which you know talks to other cpus i mean other uh, routers and other switches and then figures out what the shortest path to different places is all that is control plane okay so the control plane they said we we just need to not do it in every router in every switch and we can take all the control plane and put it into a one computer so that is the controller which gets the connectivity information for, from everybody and then finds out what is the shortest path makes a routing table for everyone and makes routing tables for everyone and sends it to them all right so there is a central controller which does all the routing table construction the switches they just do the data plane so because they don't need a very powerful cpu now they can be cheaper they don't need uh, hardware for the control part they just need the hardware for the for the forwarding part data plane they can be cheaper all right so so that is one thing is that software defined networking gives you a centralized control plane the second thing it gives you is programmability now that the control plane is in one computer you can put any policies you want and you can you can change the policies any minute you want to change it and it goes to all the computers at the same time all the switches at the same time you see previously to change the policy you will have to talk to each one of them one by one and then they will they will have to kind of exchange the messages with everybody else with their neighbors and see if they have the same policies and then find the path it was a very slow process now with the sdn everything is in one place and so you can prepare the all the tables right away and then send it to them okay so we have programmable control plane and now as a result of that because now we have con programmable control plane we can orchestrate orchestrate means you can change thousands of the switches at the same time you know so i have shown here the picture of an orchestrator the director when they move the in the orchestra when they move the the director moves the the stick everybody's tune changes right away right so that is what is done in networking now is that the, cent the central controller when it says something the whole provisioning you can provision thousands of machines thousands of switches very fast that is called orchestration and so large hadoop topologies can be created on demand so you can just decide right away that okay i need 1000 maps at uh, task nodes i need you know 200 um, data nodes whatever 1000 data nodes and that you can do very fast with software defined networking well sdn okay first of all the cloud is data center and sdn can easily handle a data center and what it can do is it can divide a data center into multiple virtual data centers so basically you know that is what you can do it, it, it can make a data center multi tenant 
and what will happen is then you can say well these switches belong to tenant 1 and these switches belong to tenant 2 and the central controller can accordingly change the routing so that nobody's packets go on to somebody else's network. They are not visible. So yes, SDN makes it possible to create an overlay of any kind you want on a, a, on a network. You are saying the nodes in the control plane. All right, there are no nodes in the control plane. Actually, there is only one controller everything is in the data plane but some nodes are shown in blue some are shown in red and so basically what these are is that some of them understand SDN which are shown in blue and some of them don't understand SDN and they are shown in red okay so so the red ones work as before they will have to talk to their neighbors and find their routes but the ones that are blue can talk to the controller and and find their route. All right, so these switches, these are actually more like routers and switches, not computers. So so the, so the blue things and the red things, all the dots here are only the. They could be V switches inside a machine, but these are switches. Let's say okay. So some of the switches are physical and some of them might be virtual. So even the virtual switches can be controlled by the controller and they can get their forwarding table from the controller. Now so the last thing is network function virtualization. Again we are going to have a bigger lecture on NFD but what is happening is that people realize that they can do a lot in software so they said why do we need to need any special hardware. So there is a group in in HC actually, European Standards Institute, Telecommunication HC is European Telecommunication Standards Institute, where they have started work on NFV, not network function virtualization. And what they are saying is, let's divide the functions that we do inside the networking devices, and and we can just implement them in software um, on a standard processor, a standard let's say Intel processor. And then we can combine these functions modules to get anything we want to make. So, for example, there could be a module for DSCP, there could be a module for NAT, there could be a module for forwarding, there could be a module for QS, and each of these are programs that have a predefined interface. So, if the interface is standard, then you could buy DSCP from one vendor, you could buy the NAT from another vendor, and you could buy QS from another vendor, and put them in your PC and make a router out of it. Right, and all of these functions could be VMs actually, virtual machines. And so, you know, if one function doesn't work, it doesn't affect the other functions, and so on. And so, so they are defining the interfaces for these modules. And once this is done, then what will happen is the, we will have app market similar to the iPhone app market. Once the iPhone people said define their API and then said anybody can write the application. So now in future anybody can write their DSCP module, somebody else can write their NAT module, somebody else can write QS modules. So there will be hundreds of NAT modules available on the market for 199 each. And then you know, the prices will go down significantly now because it becomes a distributed market. Right now it is all you know basically you know one supplier market. You know if you buy a NAT from one company says Cisco, you have to buy the DSCP from Cisco and you have to buy the router from Cisco, everything from one company. But then with the with, with the decent, with basically this network function virtualization, you could just get the apps from different places and combine them. And by these modules obviously, you know, you, there will be lots of applications which will provide pri privacy and security as well. So for example, in this picture I have shown NAT but you could have firewall module, you could have intrusion detection module, you could have SSL offload module, whatever you need, you could just buy an app and put it there. All right, so the last slide is about networking has enabled big data, but now one of the consumers of big data is networking because the networking itself has become a big data problem. Now, previously in the data center, we used to have you know few thousands of machines. 
now we have tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of machines physical machines and then 10 times that number of virtual machines is going into millions that many switches routers nics and everything has to be basically arranged when you see the traffic pattern you get a very big matrix right and we have to we have to be able to figure that out quickly as to where the where the faults are we have to predict where the congestion is going to happen or where the congestion is so all this has already become a big data problem and so all the techniques of big data such as hadoop etc are being used to manage the data manage the cloud itself all right big data analytics for example when you do prediction you can predict where the failures are going to happen before they happen same thing you can do here okay so now that big data has become feasible and easy obviously the cloud people are not only providing the service to other other <coughs> customers but they are using it themselves as well all right so summary the summary is that io virtualization allows all storage in the rack to appear local to any vm in that rack solve the co-location problem of MapReduce. so we saw how without moving any data the data becomes local to any vm in the rack by using mr iov that was the first thing right second thing is the, the network virtualization the storage anywhere in the data center or in the other data centers or other part of the world can appear local now in this case it is just appears local but it is really i mean you know so it, the data has to be moved so we should we want to avoid that for for large um, amount of data but sometimes you uh, need to do it and you can do it third message was that the software defined networking allows orchestration now this is a word that you have to know from now on orchestration of a large number of resources that means you can provision you can start a large number of switches virtual switches routers and you can then manage them monitor them orchestration right a large number and you can create dynamic quickly create a group cluster and then network function virtualization will allow these clusters to have special functions and security in the multi tenant cloud so now what will happen is now you don't need any special uh, hardware uh, you can just use the standard processor as networking devices as well so previously you needed switches etc now you can just use the processor as the switches all right so in this we have shown you two no two, no two two nodes name node and data node you understand these two functions data node keeps the data and the name node keeps track of where the data is all right so the name node is the master for the data and the data node is the slave for the data basically so there are thousands of data nodes maybe hundreds or tens or whatever number of large, large number of data nodes and then there is a master name node okay now the same thing needs to be done for the jobs for the compute we need a master and we need lots of slaves okay the master is called job tracker and the slaves are called task tracker so there are thousands of task trackers and one job tracker job tracker knows which is who is up who is down who is working on what so now we have two masters we have job tracker which is one master for compute and we have a name node which is the master for data location and we have two sets of slaves one is the data node which have the data and we have task trackers so the name task tracker is kind of confusing it looks like task tracker is tracking something we could have called them task node then it would be much easier to understand they are just doing the job they are not tracking anything they are doing the job so they are the compute jobs and now we need both the task and the data to the same place so in this picture we have shown dn plus tt dn is the data node and tt is the task tracker all right so we have four kinds of node let's just do one more time job tracker what does job tracker do first of all is it a master or a slave you have to answer that's the question yeah master for compute now name node 
is it master or a slave for data right and now we understand so what is the data node yeah it's layer for the data and so there are hundreds of those and then task tracker is the slave for no it's the slave for the job tracker but it's doing the job it's really doing the task it's not tracking anything 